The arrest of a Michigan pastor has completely shocked and rocked their community. And, and what this guy did, I mean, this is not good. There were many people affected by it. And, you know, we're going to get into it. The church released a statement on the arrest. It happened during their Sunday, September 15th service, that being 242 Community Church. This is the Brighton campus in Michigan. We're going to go over it all here in just a second. But before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story of how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see. I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help out, we have multiple ways you can do that. One by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. You could also become a monthly contributor by joining my Patreon, patreon.com slash news. That link in the description. You can sign up there for as little as five bucks a month. And also you could help us out with our GoFundMe. The GoFundMe link is in the description of this video and all videos. Now, why do we have a GoFundMe? The GoFundMe was started to help out myself and my wife with our stacking medical bills and other bills as we're just trying to keep the lights on at this point. And it was my wife who who's only 39. She suffered a stroke back in August. And no, it was not because she took the juice. And I always have to make mention of that because people were making wild speculation and assuming that and they don't know anything about her her medical history no doctors determined that it was caused by an endocarditis buildup on her heart where a piece of that broke off and went to the brain in addition to that she was diagnosed with a clotting disorder uh, and then now having to be on blood thinners for the rest of her life they also wanted her to be on six weeks of antibiotics to treat the endocarditis unfortunately she had multiple reactions and side effects to those medicines which were very strong uh, one of them caused her to get a rash that ended up blowing up like a balloon with swelling. It was it was, it was such a scary thing. Uh, and then another one of the antibiotics ended up uh, severely starting to deteriorate her muscles, and she was in extreme muscle pain. She still is right now, especially in her knees and legs. And uh, that wasn't even an original problem. That was a side effect from these antibiotics. And so uh, pain is, is starting to subside finally, but she still has a significant amount there. Um, and she's going to be out of work for a while. And we got a lot of different ologists to see. There's a lot of follow-up appointments for us. And so that's why we created the GoFundMe to help us out with all these expenses. So, you know, if you feel led in any way by the Lord to help us out, please do that. You know, we greatly appreciate that. Um, and also, you know, if you can't contribute financially, just hit the like button on these videos and share them because you guys doing that helps, gets them, you know, out there in the algorithm more and gets them recommended to more people and more eyes on them, and it'll, it'll help us uh, to get more revenue from these uh, videos. So again, uh, do that. If you're not able to actually give a donation, remember just hitting the like button and sharing the videos helps us as well. Uh, we love and appreciate all of you for your support and, and also continue to keep us in your prayers uh, for complete healing and restoration and uh, strength for both of us uh, during this difficult time that we're facing. Let's get into this. The exposure of the Lord is continuing and the judgment that begins in the house of God, you know, we saw it all summer. It's continuing now, and I believe it's going to continue for some time. Uh, this is a pretty big piece of news. 242 Community Church, they have multiple uh, sites, multiple different campuses across Michigan. They made the announcement to their congregation on Sunday, September 15th. Now, this was during their church services, but they actually released an email to congregants the day before which was on Saturday, September 14th, informing um, all the sites, but specifically the Brighton campus, because that is where this a whole thing occurred. But in the email, they informed the congregants that upon learning about a situation that took place on Friday, September 13th, one of their pastors was fired. Not only fired, but then he was arrested not long after that. And that was their worship pastor, Will Johnson. And he served there at the Brighton campus. And church staff and elders were made aware of a hidden camera inside one of the shared restrooms there that was in the backstage area, as they called it. 
there at the Brighton campus. And upon finding out about this, they had confronted Will Johnson about it. They asked him if he was the one that put the camera in the restroom, and he confessed. He confessed to doing it. Church leaders said that they immediately reported this to police, and then Will Johnson was arrested not long after that. Now, again, that went out in an email to congregants on Saturday, September 14th. And then on Sunday, September 15th, there was uh, an announcement that was made. There was a video uh, that was released. It was on the church of the 242 Community Churches. Uh, they put it on their YT channel, which, by the way, if you do want to watch the full statement from the service, I will put a link to that video in the description here of my video and you can go watch it in full. I will note that they did turn off the comments on that video because of the nature of what was being discussed. So I thought that to be interesting. Now, uh, during the service on Sunday, September 15th, they informed the congregation again of Will Johnson's arrest. They say they were deeply shocked and saddened by the events that took place. They said that Will Johnson had admitted to it upon leaders finding out about the camera, the hidden camera in the bathroom. And also what church leaders have stated is that, for one, not only are they working with you know local law enforcement, is this is still under investigation, but the church is also going to be uh, acquiring a third party, a third party investigation to help them look in the church for potentially more hidden cameras. Now, at the time of the statement, they said that they did not believe that there were any more hidden cameras anywhere around the church, but they could not confirm that as 100% fact. So because of this, um, and because, you know, this already has affected, I mean, Lord knows how many people, um, they're going to send a team in there and they are going to look around and see if they can find uh, any more. Uh, so this is not the first time, by the way, that we have heard of, of a pastor in a church doing something like this, you know, with the hidden cameras. Um, and unfortunately, it probably also won't be the last. But the church also noted in the statement on Sunday, September 15th, that they were going to be having um, mental health counselors that would be available to talk to anybody in need. Uh, they would be out on the basketball courts um, during the service and after the service for anybody that, you know, again, needed to to reach out. The church said that they were committed to the safety of all of its members, and they brought up the fact that all of the staff members have to go through background checks prior to getting hired and brought on. Now, I don't know if that was the case for Will Johnson. Um, even if there was a background check done, of course, these, these things can, you know, just, you know, go under the radar and, and you can completely miss them. Um, it doesn't mean that they still have, you know, bad intentions, even if they do pass a background check. But you know, again, this is a worship pastor here. You know, that's a, you know, that's a high title. I mean, you know, when you are the one that is, you know, managing and operating, you know, you know worship and directing it and all of that, you know, worship is important. Uh, and when you violate the trust of so many uh, by doing here what Will Johnson did, I mean, it's just, it's such a stain on the church as a whole. Uh, you know, it might even be a good idea, again, because we know that 242 has multiple sites Maybe they want to send the third party in to look at the other campuses too. I mean, you just never know at this point, right? Uh, so I want to get your guys' thoughts on this. You know, let me know in the comment section. Maybe you are somebody who um, attends, the, especially if you attend the Brighton campus, and you want to chime in with your thoughts. Maybe you're somebody who attended the service on September 15th, and you'd like to give your insight into the situation or any other 242 campus for that matter. Uh, where do you see this going? There will be more information released on this, no doubt. And so I will bring you an update on it when one becomes available. But I just kind of wanted to talk about it here and discuss it since I saw this come across my desk and, uh, you know, the church had addressed it on Sunday, September 15th. So I thought it was worth bringing up and talking about. And this is so recent that this has happened now. Uh, but again, let me know your thoughts down below. And don't forget again as well, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help out, remember you have multiple ways of doing that. You can help us out with our GoFundMe. The GoFundMe link is in the description of this video and all videos. You can become monthly contributors by joining the Patreon, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link also in the description. 
And you could also hit the super thanks button on the YT video if you choose to make a donation that way. Either way, it helps us out. It's a tremendous blessing. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves who occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.